In this video, we're going to be looking at the domain of a composite function. Now, this is quite a fiddly idea. Okay? So, we're going to start off with f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2, and g of x is equal to x over x minus 3. Now, this function, if we look at the uh, largest possible domain, then x can belong to the real numbers, except for x is minus 2. So x can't be minus 2 for that one. If we look at the second one, x can belong to any real number as long as it's not 3. Okay? So those are the two uh, greatest possible domains for those functions. Now, when I am looking at f of g of x, then the g of x is coming first. And so, any number that I put into this must obey that restriction. So the restriction of x not being equal to 3 must be maintained. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, let's see what happens to the second one for f of x. So algebraically, uh, g of x is going to f. So I have 1 over um, x over x plus o, x over x minus 3 rather plus 2. So that replaces the x that's there. Now I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 3, top and bottom. And I get x minus 3 over x plus 2 lots of x minus 3, so 2x minus 6. Now that simplifies to x minus 3 over 3x minus 6. Now that has an added restriction to it, as you can see, because x cannot be equal to 2. Put that. Otherwise, I'm going to get 0 in the denominator. Now what's strange here, or apparently strange, is because, because I've got that x is not equal to 3, but it seems to work here. X looks like 3. Well, if X were 3, I would get a valid number. However, that is a restriction that's been put on by G of X initially. So, what I'm saying is that the domain is that X can be any real number apart from X is 3 or 2. But where has that initial restriction for f gone? What's happened to that? Well, what's happened is that once I've put g of x in, the only value f couldn't take was minus 2. So the only value that would have been problematic is if g of x had taken on the form of minus 2. So if I solve this equation, multiplying both sides by x minus 3, I get x is equal to minus 2x plus 6. Add 2x to both sides, and divide both sides by 3. So if uh, g of x took on the form of minus 2, then x would have had to have been 2. And as we saw here, that was the value that we got that was the problem. So, in fact, the x is not minus 2 part here has effectively been morphed into this restriction here, okay, through that algebraic process. So what we need to see here is that f g of x can be written down, okay, here, and from it we're getting the restriction of x is not allowed to be 2, and we've got the initial restriction from g of x being first. Okay? If I had done uh, g of f of x, then we would have had a slightly different story. Okay? So, to show you that this would be different, f of x now goes into g. So we're going to get 1 over x plus 2 over... 1 over x plus 2, take away 3. 
If I multiply everything by x plus 2, I get 1 over 1, take away 3 lots of x plus 2, so 3x minus 6, and that's 1 over minus 3x, 1 take away 6 is minus 5. So we don't want that denominator to be 0. So minus 3x minus 5 equals 0. Add 5 to both sides. Divide both sides by minus 3. Okay? So we've got, we would have the initial restriction, so the domain of this, we would have the initial restriction that x could be any real number apart from what f was unable to be, so minus 2. And it can't be minus 5 thirds. And this restriction is coming from this one here now being transformed into this one, effectively. So you take, a po you take on the restriction from the first function, and then you're going to have a restriction on the composite function. And those two must be combined where effectively they must overlap.